Welcome everybody. Uh, you're here at Plexi San Francisco Lair. So uh, this is uh, in many cases probably your uh, first experience here with Plexi. We're looking forward to telling you a little bit about us. Before we get there, we do want to point out that uh, the socks of Plexi is one of the things that we hold near and dear. So we've decided to share that with you. You each have a set of socks of Plexi as well as a set of Hobbit socks because, well, they're Hobbit socks. Why wouldn't you want those? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, first of all, without any further ado, I uh, just wanted to uh, welcome you all here and uh, also uh, wanted to uh, give you warm regards from Mike Bashong, who couldn't join us today. He's actually in the hospital prepping for surgery, unfortunately. He'll be fine, but he just wanted to say hey to everybody here who uh, we worked with in the past. And without any further ado, I do, I'd like to introduce to you our uh, CEO, Dave Husack. We'll tell you a little bit more about Plexi, and uh, everybody, welcome, and thanks for joining. Thank you. Indeed. Thanks a lot. Hey. Thank you, Dan. Uh, so I, you know, Matt asked me just to provide you with a little bit of background, a few expository remarks about what Plexi is. I'm, I know a lot of you have been exposed to um, the products we've been building, the architecture we're, we're you know, building for the enterprise networking and, and data center networking space. Um, and we have a lot of, uh, you know, news to actually share with you today. Uh, you know, I think prefetching a bunch of the announce product announcements we're going to be doing over the course of next month in October. Um, so it's a really exciting time for Plexi. You know, Plexi, uh, we're just two and a half years old. Uh, you know, venture-funded company that is uh, hoping to make some uh, have have a big impact on the on the markets and uh, that we serve with the products we built. Um, I think many of you know that. Uh, you know, Plexi is, uh, we're an SDN company. We are delivering an SDN, you know, product solution that ha includes, you know, switching hardware plus controller software, right? Um, there's really two areas that we are investing in, the places that we are spending our money, our time, and our, our intellectual capital, you know, building up our, our uh, you know, patent portfolio and our product features. Um, the first of which that I think a lot of people look, when they look at Plexi, the first thing that they, you know, draws their attention is the fact that we, are using optical multiplexing in a data center and enterprise networking setting. You know, in fact, the Plexi switches are the first products of their kind that have photonic and electronic switching, you know, baked into the same box, baked into the same chassis, right? And why is that important? Um, it's important because, you know, taking advantage of a, uh, a fact that's been sort of obviously very well known and, and, and uh, highly used in the telecom space for decades, the fact that photonic switching you know, in you know, bit per second per dollar per watt is something like a, a 20,000 to one advantage over electronic switching in terms of what you can actually accomplish in you know, moving data around. Right? So the, the Plexi switch is actually in the box, has a photonic multiplexing layer and an electronic switching layer. Right? The electronic switching is a Broadcom Trident family just like, you know, pretty much just like everybody else. And that's the part that does you know, the packet manipulation, bit twiddling and all the, uh, you know, Ethernet protocol implementation stuff that we're all very familiar with. Um, I'd, I'd assert, you know, pretty confidently that it actually does enough of that, right? You know, the, the level of the, the features, functions, and capabilities that, uh, that you get today when you buy, you know, merchant switching silicon is more than adequate for the task at hand. In fact, a lot of the scaling and, and, and functional, you know, directions that our industry needs to head over the course of the next, you know, year, three year, five year, ten year kind of time frame is really about scaling against internal data center demands, right? That uh, for which, you know, we don't need more electronic bit manipulation, we need more scale out, right? And that's where the photonic piece comes in. In the Switch One products, the stuff that we're shipping today, um, they are the simplest products we will ever sell, right? They uh, have what we call two, you know, light rail ports that allow packets to come in on our backbone photonically, you know, those photons. They can either you know, fly directly overhead passively, they can get mapped from one wave onto another wave and keep going, or they can drop down to the electronic, the Broadcom realm, and get switched out to the, switched out to the access ports, the 10 and 40 gig access ports. Our controller computes the efficient optical architectures, the efficient optical topologies, based on application workloads that configures that optical multiplexing to serve application needs in the, in the most efficient possible way. So I kind of look at it as like a little bit of a sandwich, right? Where, you know, the, the electronic switching part, the Broadcom piece, is really the, the jacks are better. It's the, it's the common functionality that we all have. It's the things you don't get with Broadcom that Plexi you know, supplies. It is 
you have to interconnect those, those switch fabrics together to build a network, and you have to have the smarts to go and utilize that capacity in the most efficient way. So if we look at what the scaling requirements are, you know, like I said, going forward, you know, the two-year, five-year, ten-year time frame, God forbid, right? Um, we all hear all the report, you know, the, the measurements of the internet, you know, the public internet bandwidth, right, is doubling every, whatever, 13 or 14 months now, right? And it's, you know, driven by video, driven by mobile, all the things people talk about. That's an enormously fast scaling rate, and it continues to, you know, you know grow un, unabated, right? The growth rate of inside the four walls data center bandwidth is now scaling by most measures something like six or seven x that rate, doubling every two to three months, right? You heard if you've if you've uh, uh, you know heard Najam from Facebook talk yesterday. He's you know he has a a, stat, a number that he throws around. You know currently for every byte of traffic that flows in and out of Facebook, 930 bytes change hands inside of Facebook to get you know to get that you know to fill your screen with all the, all the good Facebook stuff, right? And it, it sort of makes sense. You know, all the ways that Facebook and Google and all the you know, social media, big web properties, the, the places where they're innovating by providing us with ever better, more robust social experiences and serving their, of course, their paying customers, advertisers and such, right? It's all about assimilating and, and, and computing more behind the scenes and tying all those, all those streams together. So every time they innovate, it really, it doesn't change how much bandwidth, how, much, how many bytes they're sending to me and you, it changes how much information gets shared inside the four walls. So if you take just that growth rate, you know, for Facebook, you know, we're at a thousand to one, you know, doubling six or seven times as fast as, as the public internet, where do we need to be, right, you know, in two years, in five years, in terms of how we build data center networks and enterprise infrastructure, right? Um, Moore's law will not save you. Moore's, you know, building, you know, bigger, better, faster switches that you hook together in various sorts of hierarchical topologies, you know, leaf spines, fold, you know, clo fabrics, flattened butterflies, all those technologies will simply not, not keep pace, right? The answer is not about building bigger hierarchical uh, structures. It's about more diversity. It's providing more direct paths to everywhere you need to go. It's about uh, fabric topologies that are naturally multipath. That where multipathing is not the exception, something you need to solve for. It's that are, they are naturally designed to take full advantage of multipath. You have to compute efficient topologies. You have to compute efficient structures on top of that. And that's what our controller does, right? Our controller takes applications requirements and renders really efficient optical topologies on a photonically agile fabric. And we have the switches that have that, that, you know, the first generation of such a fabric built into them. And that is why, uh, um, that is the trajectory I believe that we are all on in this business. You know, uh, I believe that, you know, 10 years from now, enterprise and data center networks look an awful lot more like Plexi networks than they do like um, Cisco, Juniper, Dell, uh, you know, uh, Arista, dot, 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 because they all essentially sell the same product, just different different paint colors, and uh, <laughs> uh, not to be provocative or anything. Um, <laughs> but, you know, we have to, if, if we're going to keep pace, if, if, if uh, you know, for the products that we build and our industry builds, if we're going to keep pace with the demands, we have to leverage the photonic advantage. We have to, we have to move in that direction. We have to be able to optimize for workload, right? We also have to optimize for workflow, and that's actually the bulk of the demo you're going to see today. You know, driven by uh, our, our uh, compatriot Cloud Toad. Um, abstract. You heard me talk yesterday at SDDC a lot about in, in the, the few times I was on stage, coming back to the idea of abstractions and being able to sort of elevate the discuss, ele elevate the way that users of networking resources talk about, document, and access those resources. It can't just be that we keep talking about layered protocol stacks and virtualizing more layered protocol stacks on top of layered protocol stacks. And you know, the, the, the problem we face today, in fact, a lot of I think the underlying motivation for why software-defined networking and software-defined everything else has this sort of, I think, um, natural appeal. You know, people get excited about it without even having serviceable definitions of what it is, right? But I think that sort of speaks to the underlying problem set, right? That, that the systems we have built are, you know, too complicated, too combinatorially complicated for, you know, our users to understand how to build them, configure them, orchestrate them, debug them when they, when they break. And so we need to elevate that conversation. We need uh, a way to integrate networking 
with the other constituent technologies for application deployments for multi-tenancy in a way that um, it's coherent. And we've contributed something into that space. Uh, you've heard us talk about um, uh, using the word affinity, the affinity API. Um, it's uh, the, the code that we've contributed to the first simultaneous release of the Open Daylight project. It is the way that we integrate with you'll see today with op, ops code with, uh, uh, and with uh, other partners to servo Plexi networks directly to application and, and cloud, cloud hosting demands.